rare, fast and frantic, Vauxhall's Australian-built VXR8 is an expensive but highly addictive super saloon with sledgehammer performance from its monster 6.2-litre V8. Subtle it isn't, but fun? Oh yes. The most apparently mild-mannered of us can conceal a wild and wacky sight, an observation that can also hold true across the motor industry. Take Vauxhall, a reserved and sensible volume brand, surely, but one that also holds something of an extreme history when it comes to wild and ridiculous fast four-seaters. After all, way back in 1911, ordinary folk were horrified by the huge performance of the Mark's Prince Henry model, just as um, planet-loving people were appalled and secretly fascinated by the 170 mile an hour potential of the Griffin brand's 1980s Lotus Carlton Saloon. As they will be by this car, the model they call the Thunder from Down Under, Vauxhall's VXR8. Down Under? Yes, didn't I mention this car may wear Vauxhall badges, but it actually started life as a Holden a Commodore E3 HSV to be exact. No, it didn't mean anything to me either, but such a car is a big deal if you're an Aussie. A proper no-nonsense, hell yeah, super saloon. Tough enough to make an M3 or a C63 seem ever so slightly Sheila. Not perhaps in terms of sheer power, though 425 BHP ought to be enough for anyone but more in terms of the way you get it, which is via a big, brash, all-American V8, lifted straight from the Chevy Corvette supercar. Six litres in size in the original version of this model announced in 2009, and uprated to a 6.2 in the improved version we're gonna look at here. Now, this particular VXR8, looks meaner, rides better, and offers more gadgets in return for its fairly frightening 50,000 pound price tag. So, Aussie rules, let's find out. So, what's it like? Bloody marvelous, mate, is the answer, at least when it comes to oral entertainment. Twist the ignition key, and you fire up one of the world's great engines uh, with exactly the sort of deep chested woofling exhaust note at idle that every real muscle car needs. And make no mistake, this is a real rear wheel drive muscle car, very different in character from its more familiar 50,000 pound M3 or C63 style um, premium brand super saloon rivals, mainly because it wasn't built with them in mind. Let me explain. Just as in Europe we see a furious power struggle between the German prestige makers, so in Australia the fight is ferocious between Ford and Holden, uh, and it's one of power, noise and not a lot of subtlety. It's also one that GM reckoned to have decisively won when their Holden brand first announced this car with a six litre Chevy Corvette supercar sourced V8. Now this is an engine we've seen in many forms over the years, three of them beneath the bonnet of this car. Having launched it with 411 brake horsepower, then offered it in a supercharged special edition Bathurst S form with 564 brake horsepower, the Aussie engineers behind this thundering super saloon settled on a mere 425 brake horsepower for this improved version, uprating the uh, V8 to 6.2 litres in order to achieve it. So, um, a little bit more than you get in, say, um, an E30 series BMW M3 V8 or Lexus ISF, but a slug less than you'd find in, say, a Mercedes C63 AMG or a Jaguar XFR. But good enough, nonetheless, for an awesome set of performance figures. Not too much happens below 3000 RPM, but uh, get beyond that, and this Aussie beast really starts to move, thanks to a thumping 550 Newton meters of torque. 
Rest to 60 occupies a fraction under five seconds as you rev up to the six and a half thousand RPM red line on the way to a uh, limited top speed of 155 miles an hour. True, there are of course plenty of ways that you can go that quickly for 50,000 pounds these days, but few of them feel quite as extreme as this. Specify, as you surely must, one of the louder performance exhaust options and every thrust of your right foot is accompanied by a sound loud enough to signal the early throes of galactic disaster. It's enough to scare small children and furry animals and earn you the lifelong disapproval of those in your local neighbourhood watch. Fantastic. Here then is a car designed to fly in the face of all manner of political correctness. And if you didn't already know this, then the display for angles of oversteer and understeer on the central EDI, that's the enhanced driver interface screen, ought to speak volumes. Via the same monitor, you can also oversee things like G-forces, uh, power and torque usage, and lap times. All of which, as a new VXR8 owner, you'll doubtless want to put to the test. No problem. Find yourself some open, unrestricted tarmac, then fully switch off the uh, stability control via this button here, bypassing the interim competitive mode, and all of your Top Gear tail out fantasies can be realised. And if you like all that, then you'll love the launch control setup, automatically engaged when you select the stability control system's competitive mode. Just get yourself into position, mash the throttle, and catapult yourself towards the horizon in a cloud of blue smoke. Which, if you've got an airfield in your back garden and an unlimited supply of Bridgestone Potenza tyres, will be bloody brilliant. I'm assuming, though, that at least a handful of the few British VXR8 buyers will be people who also have to live in the real world. For these people, a more significant feature of this improved VXR8 will be the availability of a six-speed automatic gearbox as an alternative to this rather clunky six-speed manual. And magnetic ride suspension, proof that this car isn't all blood and thunder and technology shared with supercars like Ferrari's California, Audi's R8, and Chevrolet's Corvette C6. Magnetic ride works essentially by changing the thickness of the fluid in the suspension's dampers so that the car can immediately be transformed at a push of a button from being passably comfortable, that's in sport mode, to being more responsive, that's the sharper track setting. Now, it won't be enough to make this Vauxhall a comfortable commuting car, but then it never should be. This is instead a machine designed to be bold, brash and brutish. A true muscle car in every way. Now, you won't need me to tell you this, but you need a certain amount of chutzpah to carry off a VXR8. After all, draw up in the boardroom car park or in the golf club in one of these, and eyebrows will be raised and questions asked. Um, the phrase midlife crisis may crop up. Medication may be called for. But if you're of a mind to buy a VXRA anyway, don't let any of this put you off. The designers weren't, after all, giving this revised model even more in-your-face audacity, which you can further emphasise by ordering one in hazard yellow, should you be suffering from some kind of attention deficit disorder. But that isn't really necessary, the whole effect being pretty striking as it is. The uh, menacing front end with its twin bonnet air scoops featuring what Vauxhall calls a shockwave front grille, around which sit daytime running lights and huge wing vents. There's more shockwave stuff around the rear bumper, which sits below a Superflow twin post spoiler and sports-style so-called afterburner LED tail lamps. You also get twin exhaust tips that mimic the shape of the front grille. Inside, thanks to lashings of leather and carbon fibre trim, it's actually a lot nicer than you might be expecting from the Vauxhall and in places Holden badge work. OK, even partially sighted persons wouldn't imagine themselves to be in a BMW or an Audi, the materials used being more American than European. Still, the instruments are neat, the switchgear smart, and the central EDI electronic driver interface um, very nicely and neatly integrated. 
it gives you displays for everything from g-forces to oversteer and understeer to power usage and even lap times and if all that isn't enough there's an extra three gauge display on top of the center console giving you readouts for battery voltage uh, oil temperature and oil pressure to give a, a retro race car like feel all of which would be superfluous if a decent driving position was as difficult to achieve in this car as it was in this model's predecessor, the Monaro Coupe. Now fortunately it isn't, though it is a pity that the steering wheel is so big that it's so difficult to see rearwards thanks to that tea tray sized rear boot spoiler and that the column stalks haven't been Europeanized. So you spend your first few days at the wheel foolishly switching on the wipers when you're trying to turn on the indicators. But never mind the quality, feel the width. Get out of a C63 AMG or M3 saloon and get into one of these, and this Vauxhall will feel enormous. Especially here in the back, where uniquely in this class, three fully sized adults can be accommodated, providing that the middle seat occupant is prepared to straddle this rather bulky central transmission tunnel. The boot's also bigger than you'll find on any German rival, which is just as well since you can't push the rear seats forward. Um, only Jaguar's XFR is able to rival the 496 litres on offer. When this car was first launched in 2009 for around £35,000, it was very good value indeed on a performance per pound basis. Sadly, pound to Australian dollar exchange rate changes have scuppered much of this model's uh, value proposition. Though in theory you can buy a stripped out club sport version, which also comes as an estate and would you believe a pickup? In practice, virtually no one ever does. So here I'm going to concentrate on the GTS saloon model that uh, we've been looking at, uh, which uh, costs around £50,000 with a premium of around £1,700 if you want the six-speed automatic version. Now, that kind of pricing puts this machine uh, with 425 brake horsepower uncomfortably close to a 450 brake horsepower Mercedes C63 AMG or a 420 brake horsepower BMW uh, E90 series M3 V8, and both of those cost around um, £55,000. A um, 417 brake horsepower Lexus ISF is around £58,000 and a 510 brake horsepower Jaguar XFR uh, is around £65,000. So uh, it's close to those rivals but um, a saving is a saving and the £10,000 or so you'll save over those cars will doubtless come in very useful when it comes to offsetting this Vauxhall's inevitably higher day-to-day -day running costs. Vauxhall badge or no Vauxhall badge, this VXR8's considerable asking price means it'll be rarer on our roads than any Ferrari. The Griffin brand expecting to sell no more than 25 or so cars a year through uh, five highly specialist dealers, though many more can service it. Most of what you're paying for, of course, lies under the bonnet. Only Chevrolet's Camaro and Corvette sports cars share this 6.2 litre V8, and of course they're far less practical. But uh, for £50,000, owners uh, of this model will be expecting not to have to tick too many boxes on the options list. And there should be no need to do so. Electrically powered leather covered sports seats, climate control, sports pedals, a high quality uh, stereo system with USB and AUX inputs and controls on the uh, leather covered uh, flat bottom sports steering wheel, a uh, trip computer, cruise control, uh, auto headlamps and wipers, rear parking sensors, Bluetooth compatibility for your mobile phone and these gorgeous 20 inch alloys, well they're all standard. You don't get deadlocks in the doors though, which I'd worry about a bit if I was an owner. Safety kit runs to the stability control system I think you'll need in slippery conditions, as well as the usual electronic assistance for braking and traction. You also get six airbags, anti-whiplash front head restraints, and a side blind alert system that stops you dangerously pulling out to overtake in front of someone else. But my favorite feature, I think, is this, the EDI, the Enhanced Driver Interface. Silly name, 
great toy. It works with the onboard computer to constantly stream uh, vehicle dynamics and performance data to this centrally mounted 5 inch monitor. Now via this monitor drivers can access information on things like g-forces, power and torque usage and lap times. They can even see to what degree their VX R8 is drifting and particularly enthusiastic owners um, can use the software provided. It's a MoTeC i2 software to download data after things like track days. As for options, well the main one you'll need to consider is the size of your exhaust, which depending on your preference and your neighbours can be merely loud, raucous or positively explosive. Now in theory this Vauxhall's LS3 spec 6.2 litre V8 can be quite economical if you drive it gently, or so I'm told. Um, the official combined cycle fuel figures are 20.6 miles to the gallon for the automatic and 20.9 miles to the gallon for the manual don't seem to bear this out. Though to be fair that's only 3 to 5 miles to the gallon worse than you get with obvious rivals. Which I suppose isn't bad given that at 1.8 tonnes this is predictably the heaviest car in its class. Assuming though that you drive this car at least some of the time in the manner it was designed for I reckon that 13 to 15 miles to the gallon is probably a more realistic average. There is, you see, no way of getting around this. Even by the expensive standards of the Super Saloon category, this is going to be a very pricey car to run. Depreciation will be painful. Uh, insurance will be a top of the shop Group 50. Uh, and the CO2 emissions, well, they've improved a bit from the 365 grams per kilometer that the original 6 litre version of this car belched out but at between 320 and 324 grams per kilometer they're still going to leave a sizable dent in your tax return around 60 grams per kilometer worse than say an E90 series BMW M3 and if you use this car in the way it was intended then you may well find yourself with a sizable tyre bill for replacement of 20 inch Bridgestone Potenzas too. We all I suppose have to pay for our pleasures but VX R8 owners will be paying more than most. Here without doubt is a car of its country. Though it offers four doors and a big boot in every other respect, this Australian muscle car rips up sense and sensibility and spits them out through its huge exhausts. If you find yourself comparing a VXR8 to more ordinary rivals or agonising over the fuel figures, then to be honest, you'd miss the point entirely. This is a car built to challenge convention. It isn't supposed to be an M3 or a C63, and it won't suit shrinking violets. Which is why I like it. In an age of stifling political correctness, it is after all rather refreshing to find a car that doesn't take itself too seriously. Yes, this Vauxhall is more expensive than it should be and the 6.2 litre V8 will be frighteningly expensive to run. But against that, it's concussively quick, offers better handling than its image might suggest and has been built to entertain rather than to provide the right corporate image. It's an old school approach to driving fun but it's a highly addictive one.